The Gifted, Season 1, Episode 11, Thoughts. This episode is called 3x1. I guess it's 3 in 1, 3 times 1. I don't think the idea of adding an X to every single episode title worked out the very best for this one. But, moving on. Spoilers for everything live-action X-Men leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after it. And, uh, yeah, another episode I love. The show is rated TV-14, and so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we opened two years ago, and I'm not 100% certain what movie they just watched in that theater, but there's some chance that it was Hitman Agent 47, and my headcanon is that even that movie is not badass enough for Clarice Fong. And, yeah, they're confronted by purifiers. And we see, you know, sadly, this has happened many times. In, in, you know, in real life as well. Is happening, will continue to happen. You know, I, I want to say it's called the bystander effect. You know, you have all these people who don't stand up against the the pure you know these yeah these hateful people who target minorities and let's see yeah back in the and and I really appreciate Clarice actually calling them out and you know the detail that her date Nate just you know basically abandons her, you know, he, he specifies, no, 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 I'm, I'm not a mutant, I'm not one of them. And yeah, back in the present, the, the triplets, I really love how, like, some of the time they speak in unison, sometimes they'll finish each other's sentences, just, yeah, very nicely done. And, and there's this sort of effect to when all three of them talk in unison, I, yeah, it's just, it's, it's excellent. You know, they, they added some kind of audio filter. It's not just that, you know, there's three, the same voice coming out of three different bodies, which essentially is what this is. You know, they're not really individuals. And yeah, um, the, you know, they're talking about rebuilding the Hellfire Club. Very, very cool. And, or hot, I guess. And I really love the, the intercut funerals where, you know, Jace, like, straight up compares the mutants to Lucifer. You know, just, yeah. And that is something we see, you know, to the, yeah. Historically and today, you know, religious extremists say that the they're, you know, the people they don't like the people they choose to make their enemies they yeah they they compare them to the the evil from their religion you know that makes it easy then you don't have to think about how you're hurting them because they're evil what you know and yeah and you know marco specifically you know it's almost as like he can hear the the other funeral because he specifically says you know the our enemies act as if we're not even human and let's see um yeah and then we have the yeah um you know Gary Dillahunt says, I'm not a monster, I just play one, well, several, on TV. And, yeah, the... I still don't think I'm going to be using the word myself, but apparently the, the three sisters did give the name that, you know, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they keep calling them the, the Frost frost Triplets, I want to say. So that's why I'll be calling them. But yeah, the, you know, supposedly they gave the the name, the last name, the, the bird type that they also have in the in the comics. And, and yeah, we learn, you know, 
when when it comes to to support for the the triplets you know the the people at the Atlanta Mutant Underground you know you you take 50 coins you throw them in the air 50 times 50 50 you know yeah half of them are for them half of them are against them which yeah that is american politics i guess politics in the west in general in a lot of countries at least today you know they they speci again they specifically say half of them think they'll they'll save us half think they'll destroy us. so you know that's not a verbatim quote but that's yeah and let's see and and yeah you know in in the background the you know the triplets are using this division to to help rebuild the hellfire club so yeah you know sadly you know there are people who use the the political division to yeah make things worse and no they're not jewish just to to cut that one off immediately Let's see. There, you know, in general, not minorities. I'm talking about straight white cis men who have a lot of power. Now, let's see. Yeah, good conversation between Polaris and Marcos. And yeah, you know, Clarice tries to reassure Lori. You know, Dreamer's death wasn't her fault you know maybe maybe she could have prevented it but it wasn't her fault and yeah the the you know dr campbell is now able to combine powers very very yeah that's that's gonna make them extremely powerful and by the end of the episode we see you know the government has agreed to expand the project and yeah great to see Wes again and yeah I was I'm with Kate like what reads the cool dad now great to see you again this, you know and yeah and and yeah I guess I can't call her Esme because we don't you know she, yeah, one of the triplets says, you know, it doesn't really matter. We're kind of three and one. And, yeah, she explains to, to Polaris, your real father, your biological father, was the, you know, not who Polaris considers her real father, and that obviously matters more emotionally. The, the um, yeah. Not only was he part of the Hellfire Club, he was a king that makes Polaris royalty. You know, which, yeah, that is that is very persuasive. And yeah, I like the thing. You know, uh, you know, bad things have happened in my life. I like to think that it led me here to stacking boxes. Let's see. And, and he continues to be very smooth, stacking boxes with you, you know. I was here when you got here. And Marcos and, and Polaris talk about how the, the baby is, is changing her, you know, making her more powerful. I, I quite appreciate when fiction explores... We, you know, we have so many stories about the negative effects that sometimes babies can have, even in the womb. There is, uh, you know, truth to that. Those are important stories to tell. But I really appreciate when media explores the other side, which, you know, I, myself, you know, being a cis man, have never been pregnant. I've never had a partner who was pregnant, but I, you know... Nevertheless, I've, I've, you know, I've become aware that, yeah, the, the, you know, it's essentially, it's the, the hormonal thing, which, you know, for, for so long, in so much media, it's just a bunch of cis straight men who are like, oh, you know, my partner is being all weird, it's like, 
could you have just a tiny bit of empathy for her? And and here we actually see the the positive side of that, which is documented. And yeah, we learn that Polaris, you know, the reason she's sensitive about ableist language when it comes to mental health is she, you know, she's bipolar, which yeah, that really explains that very nicely not that that has to be the case for that and and yeah I like the the discussion of ideals versus reality <clears throat> very cool fight the or action scene not much of a fight with the the hounds attacking and you know blowing down entire walls and a lot of air bursts. I hesitate to, they're not quite explosions, so that's not the right word, but yeah, really, really nicely done. They clearly, you know, they spent a lot of, of time and money on this episode, and it really paid off. Like, several bits where someone is, like, running down a wall, and suddenly, like, you know, part of the, the wall is, is destroyed, or that sort of thing. People flying through the air, very cool. And... Yeah, the the Atlanta people managed to to save them. I love how the triplets are just so calm. like they are just dominating this. You know, yeah. Also, the the earlier scene where they just walk out, explain their their stands, and you know we see they they specifically they've got like these heels and they've got this like I don't know if it's like Catholic school uniforms, it's, you know, in in that general direction kind of thing. And as soon as they've said the thing, you know, they just walk and they disappear into into bright light. Very cool. And and yeah, here at the end, you know, they're just standing there waiting for them, leaning up against the the government cars. And and you know, yeah, we know you're squeamish about killing. We just gave them something to think about. Yeah, I I don't think it was happy thoughts. And let's see. Yeah, um, the Jay specifically says we don't, we can't be politically correct about this. Wow. And yeah, we have the thing about you know, oh, this is this is for the common good, which is what a lot of evil people say, if, you know before they do something awful. And and yeah, we learn, you know, yeah, the government guy's like, oh, we could maybe we could take this national and and Camel's like, we could take this international, which holy crap. Yeah, that's that is very ominous. And I like the the fact that, you know, when the when the triplets walk in, you know, the guy's literally in front of a chessboard. And that's also called out, you know, you're, you guys are busy playing chess and hiding behind screens. And, and, you know, he's like, what were you thinking? And they're like, hello to you too. And yeah, closes with the triplets saying, you know, they're in. I thought only Sage was a hacker. I know, I know. I just, I cannot hear those words and not think that. So... Yeah, this is there's there's two episodes left of this season and yeah, they're really building very nicely towards an epic conclusion. So that's going to be really cool and yeah, I'm going to be trivia for this episode. And let's see. Right, and the um hmm. Okay, so according, yeah, I don't want to, yeah, just the, the, Esme's sisters, Sophie and Phoebe, you know, the, the, some of the, the five also have, the five and one also have those names in the comics. And, let's see, right, I appreciate the, the thing about, you know, oh, they just gave that name to, to mess with the, the cops or, or something like that. And, right, and the, yeah, there's specifically, 
given a, a diamond and, you know, Emma Frost could transform herself into a diamond. And... <laughs> the location used to represent Fairburn Vocational Institute in this episode is actually the opposite side of the very same building used as the exterior of Mutant HQ throughout the first season of the show. Some of the corresponding interior scenes were also shot in that building. The interior of Mutant HQ, however, is set on a sound stage. And let's see... Um, I think that is about yeah. Um, I th that might be everything that I have for this episode. Yeah, I've really, really love this one. Really excited to see because, like, so. The yeah, Sentinel services are now able to combine powers, making them much more, much stronger, and they're gonna expand that program. The triplets are manipulating mutant underground into, you know, basically serving what the the Hellfire Club wants. Polaris is getting increasingly powerful and more determined. Yeah, a lot of... Yeah, they're, they're building very nicely to a, an, an epic finish that... Yeah. Um, I should be able to do an episode tomorrow and quite possibly finish off the season... Thursday. So, yeah, really looking forward to, to more of this.